Hello everyone, Kenty Tiger here with Bengali Engineering and Play. We are continuing on in Space Engineers in the kind of basic concept uh, survival tutorials. Um, so what we have here is a, uh, a little larger satellite. So uh, this is kind of, uh, if we imagine the concept here, very similar to when I did my uh, role-playing survival series. Uh, this one is very similar to that one. Uh, so the kind of the, the same one that uh, Commander Kenty found, uh, this is very similar. And, and we'll, do a, uh, uh, we'll do a tour of this. Um, so over here we have our uh, uh, resources a little more closely, uh, closely in. Resources, a great big uh, huge asteroid here. Um, but uh, one of the things I want to do, not uh, for the sake of... Uh, so we have a little bit of energy here. We have uh, hydrogen. We have oxygen. So uh, these is parts, is, is what this is. Uh, so uh, in any survival kind of a situation, and I, I know I'm kind of reiterating uh, everything I said in the, uh, the other basic uh, tutorial, um, is, uh, you know, and I, I'm going to go into, uh, again, kind of going over uh, some of those aspects. What is, this looks like a giant soccer ball. Um, so, uh, not so much, oh darn, I touched it. Oh, the cow welder. I don't think I've gotten a cow welder. Um, so, uh, one of the uh, important aspects uh, is, is really um, about um, parts. Because when you're, when you're in survival, now this is, uh, I, I'm, I'm way out of priority here because priority is power. Um, so, interior plate, which is good stuff. Um, so pull my grinder back out and we'll continue on in these things. Uh, I want to get the uranium, not a whole lot of uranium there. Uh, and then and then we pull the canvas out. And then uh, that should be pretty much it at that point. So we should just have uh, some steel plates here, uh, 30 steel plates. So uh, what was the haul here? Well, we have one steel tube. Uh, we have a metal grid. We have canvas, which we can't really use for anything at, at this point. Uh, we have three motors. Those always come in handy. We have three reactor components. Those came from that small reactor. Uh, and 13 construction components, uh, 13 computers, one small steel tube, uh, and 30 steel plate. So not a bad haul. Um, so... Um, Hmm. This this may this may be a problem. May be a problem. There we go. My marker. Uh, so we'll cruise back uh, towards this. Shouldn't be too difficult to find a big ball in space, right? So, um, as we were kind of saying in the other one, and we'll go ahead and uh, reiterate some of that here. Nope, oh, that was right side up, or, or conceptually right side up. No right side up in space. Right side up is a, uh, is a function of gravity. <laughs> so, uh, what do we have here? Well, um, to the survival concept itself, um, there, there's kind of a priority that you need to focus on um, to survive. So the key word being survival here. Um, you absolutely, and this is true of everything, it, it has to have energy. So you have to have a source of energy. Um, the next priority is oxygen and hydrogen. Uh, so you can still breathe and move. Obviously, if you can't breathe, you're going to start dying when you die. Uh, game over, no pun intended. Um, 
if you run out of hydrogen, you can't move, which ultimately means you can't do anything, which means you're still going to die. So not a good thing, that, not a good scenario. So oxygen and hydrogen, the next priority. Power, oxygen, hydrogen. Um, and after that is the ability to take raw materials and do something with them. So if you have a drill, then there's your ability to gather raw materials. Um, so that can be a good thing. We have an abundant source of raw materials. We have, uh, as you see, an asteroid here, an asteroid there. We have asteroid, 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 asteroid. Um, asteroids typically have three different things. Uh, you have an abundance of stone, obviously. Um, ice uh, can be a, a big deal. Um, because ice is kind of part of this oxygen hydrogen priority because your gas generator is going to take that ice and work with it and change it into those gases that you need so it's an unrefined product from the perspective of its ice you can't use it directly but you can put it into something and then use it uh, so refine it uh, as you will uh, not really refining it just using it in a different form uh, so we take the uh, the water ice uh, and turn it into uh, via my presumption is uh, electrolysis uh, which then turns it into oxygen gas and hydrogen gas which then is compressed and you put it in your bottles um, so um, the the next thing that we need uh, after priority two, which is those gases, those critical gases, uh, as I said, was our ability to gather these raw materials and turn them into usable materials. And uh, to do that, we need a refinery. Conveniently, we have one here. If you do not have a refinery, uh, you're pretty much hosed. Uh, now, the good news is, is in any starter game, uh, except for the blank world. Uh, my view of the blank world is unsurvivable, as it is. Uh, you have to have at least the ability to produce energy somehow, um, the ability to refine materials, um, starting with the gases, so you have those critical gases, refining the materials, the raw materials, into usable materials, which is the function of the refinery, uh, and then up here, uh, we have our assembler, which can then take those usable materials uh, and turn them into the components that we need. So from usable materials, uh, the ingots, uh, namely, uh, into the materials that we need. Uh, let me bring up my inventory. These things, all of these various materials, these component parts, that we need to actually build the blocks. So, assembly. So that's, uh, that's step four. Uh, once you have those four basics, energy, the gaseous production so you can survive, then you're okay. You are okay. So you can survive indefinitely as long as you have a place where you can recharge your suit, the, the power in your suit, um, and you can really survive infinitely if you have gases. So as long as you have those two things, then you should be pretty much good to go. So having said that, let's do a quick tour for four, four things. So keep those four things in the forefront of your mind. Uh, keep the priorities straight because if you don't, uh, you may end up... Uh, uh, prematurely passing beyond the parameters of the dimension you're in, if you, uh, if you get the pun there. All right, so what do we have here? Uh, if you remember the satellite from my original role-playing uh, survival series, uh, this is very similar. Uh, it was, this is actually based on that. This is the Mark I. So let's, uh, let's have a look-see at what we have. Uh, we have 16 solar panels on this side. One of them is complete. And we have 16 solar panels on this other side. So 
the idea behind this, or my idea behind this, was to uh, have your basic stuff. And the reason I Energy did the low. basic stuff was because in any survival scenario, you have to have enough stuff to conceivably survive. Now, you can be foolish and, uh, and waste the materials that you have on things that you didn't need, certainly. Uh, but to inherently dump you into a world, a universe, an environment, and not give you the resources that you need at a basic level to survive, to, to meet those first four steps, then you are doomed to failure. And I don't really like those scenarios. So what I did here, this is a, a blank world, it, indeed blank other than you have an infinite amount of resources. We have just scads and scads of, uh, of asteroids here. Asteroids equals resources. Uh, this particular one, because this is a tutorial, uh, I put a big asteroid. This is about 250 meters across, uh, and it contains everything. So it's a layered asteroid, uh, created asteroid. And uh, I spawned it in here uh, for the purposes of, of tutorial, because this isn't a tutorial about gathering, uh, although we will talk about gathering. So, to tour. Um, our basic energy needs. So let's go ahead and start with our priorities. We have a solar panel. Uh, if you remember from my basic tutorial from last time, a solar panel is 120 kilowatts. This is a big solar panel, a large grid solar panel, and it is almost directly facing the sun, I think. Yep, facing the sun there. So we are very close to 120 kilowatts output here. Uh, we have all four green lights. We uh, zoom in here. So all four of the green lights, meaning we are at about 100% of what this thing can produce. Um, we have a battery here. So the battery you can see is uh, either in charging mode um, or is in um, no mode at all. And, and in fact, I like no mode at all. Uh, and the reason I like no mode at all is because you can input power and output power simultaneously. It will try and pull all of the power off the grid. It can and take you all the way up to 100% and then it will remain there. Uh, where you go into semi-auto, it will discharge until it's at zero. Then it will go into charge mode 100%, uh, taking everything it can with zero output at all until it gets to 100%. Then it goes into discharge mode again so it's a complete cycle 100 percent top to bottom bottom to top top to bottom continuously so i don't really care for the semi-auto um, i much prefer this ability uh, because let's look at the scenario of we're talking about energy here so let's just say i have a reactor but i have very little uranium to go into that reactor so the reactor is otherwise fully functional and uh, so my reactor is providing power, um, but if I run in semi-auto mode, when the batteries are in discharge mode, they have priority over everything. So they are providing the 100% uh, of battery capacity or 100% of the need depending on the grid, the needs of the grid. Um, if the battery is sufficient, the reactor goes to idle. And where that becomes a problem is you could discharge down to zero, not being aware that your reactor is nearly out of uranium. It's showing green. You don't even pay attention to it, but you have 0 0.001 uranium left. So the second the battery goes into recharge mode, the reactor goes to whatever percentage that it, it can. Uh, I think the... Uh, the reactors I believe put out 15 megawatts so if you had any number of batteries you're going to go to max on that reactor uh, max on the reactor is going to suck down some uranium there's no question about that so you go from having uranium uh, your batteries discharge all the way to zero uh, your reactor kicks in you have about 26 nanoseconds of charging time before your reactor is out of uranium and then your reactor is dead 
The problem is your batteries are already dead too because they were in discharge mode which took them all the way down to zero. Which means you have no power. Power's done. All over. So at that point you're at the mercy of your solar panels and solar panels while they are efficient they're free right as long as you have uh, sunlight to shine on them you have free Energy power uh, the problem with them is is they're not incredibly efficient bang for the buck uh, which is to say real estate is a lot okay two by four uh, grid uh, for a single solar panel which is 120 kilowatts max so let's uh, let's look at the scenario we ran our batteries down to zero we don't have enough power to do anything with 120 watts uh, so a little bit of a problem because we can't run our assembler we can't run our refinery uh, in fact we can't run our uh, medical bay can't run our, our medical uh, room so that would be a real problem so this is why I leave them in normal mode so they're not semi-auto anymore uh, they discharge and recharge simultaneously uh, and the batteries uh, will go up to 100% and then stay there as long as there is power available so there it is so we have power we have 120 watts sorry kilowatts 120 kilowatts we have a battery that is currently charging uh, it is outputting some power but it's currently charging we have a medical bay, which means I can heal myself if I am injured, which is a good thing. Uh, and uh, if I have gases available, it will also recharge my gas supplies. In this case, I'm out of energy. Ah, there we go. Now, um, this is eventually going to be connected into the system. Um, we'll get ourselves up to 100% here. So, um, right now this is about the only thing powered. I know this uh, cockpit here that I'm famous for uh, looks to be complete. It's actually not even started yet. It's, it's barely there. So, uh, in the front here we have connectors. We actually have three different connectors. We have one off the bottom there. We have one off the back, which I'll show you when we get back there. And then we have some stuff in front. So, the quick tour here. We have a bunch of batteries. So let's look at our batteries. I mentioned we have 32 solar panels, 16 solar panels per side. Um, we actually have eight batteries here. Uh, one, of, one of them is complete. In the center here we have a collector um, because that, that makes sometimes a little easier to put stuff away. Um, an antenna here so eventually we will be able to find our station again. Uh, as I demonstrated at the very beginning that uh, I kind of lost it it lost it um, so this is sitting on top of the medical room standard medical room there uh, we have a what I believe is a conveyor junction here so that basically goes out there and then uh, into uh, the container there uh, what do we have here we have a timer and a programmable block, and the programmable block actually is for uh, M Masters uh, automatic LCDs too, which is embedded. So as soon as you build that, it will be there. Uh, and then we have LCD panels. Now, why did I put LCD panels in here? Because I like knowing what my inventory is and the status of things. So these are all, I believe, pre-programmed. Uh, we'll find out when we get it built. Uh, we have a couple armor blocks here that's really just uh, kind of holding things together. Uh, we have my famous cockpits. I like the cockpits because it's kind of a one-stop shop. You basically jump in here. You don't have to keep pressing buttons. You can jump in, uh, walk away from your game, go get yourself a cup of coffee, go get yourself some tea, whatever you want. And uh, by the time you come back, you're at 100% power. And if this is connected into your, uh, your conveyor system, then you'll have all the gases as well. So I like it because I don't have to uh, stand there holding the key. So um, that's about it for the front side here. Uh, so let's go quickly underneath and, uh, and see what's down here. Um, we have 
a gas generator here at the bottom. We have two uh, oxygen tanks here. We have a couple more junctions here. Uh, three more oxygen tanks by the look at it. So we're going to have five oxygen tanks on this guy. You can see hanging off the side here are hydrogen tanks. So we will have a supply of hydrogen if we uh, want to dock ships. Um, we see a completed crate, uh, completed uh, cargo container, small cargo container here, and we'll, uh, we'll discuss this in just a minute. We have, uh, looks like two reactors. Uh, so we have uh, dual reactor capability for some redundancy, some, um, some extra power, so we're not uh, really dragging all of our power out of the batteries to keep the assembler and refinery working. Both the assembler and the refinery are a bit power hungry, so when they are really working hard, they're going to take some power. Um, we have conveyor system here, which goes down to this uh, connector. So uh, you don't have to worry about bumping into your satellite as you are docking your ship. Uh, we have another uh, similar uh, connector on uh, some conveyors here, back here. Uh, so what do we have in the guts of this? Um, why was there a need for a Mark II or a Mark I? Uh, I wanted to add one of the things that I've noticed is I get going and I instantly run out of storage space. Um, so storage space is always at a premium. Um, so what I wanted to do in this case is build something that was going to be flexible enough uh, and, uh, and be able to um, initially give you enough room to work with. Now. Uh, the, the reality is you're going to run out of space. Um, having a base where you can store everything, where you have five or six refineries going constantly, and you might keep up. But the second we put a miner uh, out there and pull in some, some fairly serious uh, mineral content, uh, you're gonna fill up uh, this, uh, this container system very, very quickly. So what do we have here? We actually have six large containers. I know they're kind of hard to see, but you have these four central containers. One, two, three, four. So they're stacked on top of each other. Then we have these two hanging off the side. And then under those, uh, we actually have those two uh, hydrogen tanks. All right. We talked about the refinery here. This is uh, priority number three, to make sure we have some methodology of getting those raw materials, whatever they happen to be, uh, into a usable form. And that is the function of this refinery here. So we have to have a refinery. Uh, what are these guys on the back? These are the upgrade modules. Uh, in this case, there happens to be four yield modules. What do the yield modules do? So there's three different kinds of modules. There's an efficiency module which basically reduces the amount of power that that particular device takes. So it reduces it by a percentage and that percentage changes uh, relative to the number that you have. So the efficiency modules. Um, there's three modules. The efficiency modules, uh, speed modules which speed up uh, the ability to do what, what it does. So exactly as it says on the tin. Um, then we have yield modules. Now yield modules are something that only work with the refinery. Um, they basically, whatever goes into the refinery, the refinery now becomes a lot more efficient, proportionally, but a lot more efficient. So let's say you put in a kilogram of iron and you get out a third of a kilogram of usable iron ingots let's just pretend I, th I know those are not the numbers but let's say we put these efficiency or yield modules on we're going to get more bang for the buck so that one kilogram of raw materials that one kilogram of iron ore uh, becomes let's say half a kilogram uh, of iron ingots. So we have increased our efficiency, uh, our yield, hence a yield module. Uh, 
So we get a little bit more resource out of what we put into it. So that's why I chose in this case to put four yield modules on. So our, re our uh, refinery here would be able to produce uh, much more resources initially. Okay. Now, yes, it's power hungry. Always going to be power hungry. But I do with these 32 panels, when I finally get those done, um, will actually have enough to do this at full tilt. So, not a big deal. So power, as long as we have power. Um, what do we have here? Well, we have our assembler that is uh, in the guts of this. And bolted onto that assembler are four speed modules. Now, why did I choose speed modules over efficiency modules? Which are the only two modules you can use on the assembler. Obviously, not a whole lot of purpose for the yield modules on an assembler, which is why they don't do anything. So you can use efficiency modules, which, of course, uh, are savings in power. They just mean this thing will do the same thing with a little less power. Uh, it's good when you're uh, very conservative on power. Uh, for whatever reason, you know, if you lose a battery or something like that during an attack, lose your reactor during an attack, run out of uranium, that's happened to me. Uh, so, uh, in this case, I have four speed modules. Uh, and the reason I chose speed modules is because sometimes you just want that assembler uh, to pump out components as fast as it can, uh, which then becomes a speed function functionality. So what is this thing? This is a projector. Uh, so you will be able to project uh, any blueprint that you want to put in here. So that's why it's here. All right, so that is pretty much this beastie. Uh, let's go ahead and, and look a little closer down here to see what we have. So uh, we have junction here in the middle. Uh, these junctions go up and connect onto that container there, that container in the center. Uh, so we have the uh, the gas generator here, junctions, this conveyor junctions, tanks, and then through this tank we connect on to this mystical magical thing here. And there's a reason why this is already completed, because uh, like I was saying, you can't really survive. Yes, you can sit here indefinitely uh, if you have power and gases. In this case, I have uh, a few tanks. Uh, in my inventory so I'm good right now uh, but eventually uh, you can see I am using those resources so eventually this is going to catch up um, so in most any game if you do not have a medical bay then it's going to give you a respawn ship now the nice thing about the respawn ships is they have two critical components that uh, are kind of the secondary uh, portions of our survival. So what was our four again? Power, gases, the ability to refine, and an assembler. Okay, so refinery and assembler. So if we get right down to it, power, uh, a medical bay, so we can put gases in, a medical bay, and an oxygen generator, or rather a gas generator, uh, a refinery, and an assembler. Those are our, our priority one, two, three, and four. Now, if we have a respawn ship, we have everything that we need. We've got a medical bay there, which means we have a respawn point. Um, we also have the ability to heal ourselves. It's a medical bay after all. We have typically a gas generator, which means we have the ability to take oxygen uh, and hydrogen and refill our suit with that. Uh, we have a refinery, which means we can go drill things, we can go mine, we can bring those resources back, refine them into usable materials, and then uh, put them through our assembler. So a respawn ship gives you everything you need at a basic level to survive. Okay, So in terms of this world, where this is it, a bazillion asteroids, a multi, multiple bazillion uh, square miles of nothing, but lots and lots of resources. So, hmm, what does this mean? Well, at currently, 
this is not a survivable scenario. So even though we have this, we have a medical bay so I can heal my injuries, but I have no way of creating oxygen, no way of creating hydrogen, can't refill my suit. So I'm still in a no survival type of a situation because my number two priority cannot right now be met. Because my number two priority cannot be met. It's a higher priority than priority three and four, which is my refining and assembling. Can't do those. Okay, so uh, what have I done here? This magic box that is actually a completed cargo container, should be a hint, uh, actually has some resources in it. Let's go ahead and look at what those resources are. So we have a bit of ice. Uh, 1K is not very much, uh, but it's a start. 200 uranium is actually quite a bit. Uh, if you're running the reactors full tilt, you're going to go through it pretty quickly. Um, but at initially, where there's not a whole lot of power use, you're only charging batteries, it's not going to be that much. We have construction components. We definitely need construction components. Uh, we have large steel tubes, not very many of them. Uh, we have displays, uh, definitely not very many of those. 131 computers. So we put our 131 with the 13 we got. 13 and 13, huh? Lucky 13. Uh, we have a bunch of steel plates, which is a good thing because it does take a thousand steel plates to make that refinery. Uh, 28 motors, so we have 31 motors, thankfully. Uh, reactors, so we have enough components here to make a single uh, small large reactor. How's that for a pun? Small large. So a small large grid reactor. We have solar cells. Now remember, a solar panel takes 64 solar cells uh, to complete it. Okay, so this is the equivalent of three solar panels here of solar cells and uh, interior plates. So I'm going to take all of these uh, because we're going to do some building. So uh, what's my first priority? Um, ultimately, I need a generator here. So uh, let me see. How many? Uh, I've got 32 uh, large steel tubes. So let's pull out our welder here and see what I need. I need two large steel tubes, uh, steel plate computers, motors, and construction components and steel plates. So we're all good to go here. Let's go ahead and build this up. So large steel tubes. So I should have at least 30 large steel tubes left. Yes, I do, uh, which is good because we need this refinery. Refinery is a pretty important thing. So there's priority two, All right? I have now the ability to take ice and turn it into usable gases. So the, high, the oxygen generator there, the gas generator, uh, very, very important. All right. Um, Let's look and see what we have. We need, oh, 1,100, or actually 1,200 steel plates if we get into that top one and the bottom one. So thankfully, let's see how much we have. We have 1,300, 1,350 in fact. So we're all good to go here. We need 20 large steel tubes. We have 30, so I think we're all good to go. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, weld this all the way up. There we have, so this is priority three that we have now taken care of, short of power. We're going to have power problems because the refinery and the assembler is a little bit power hungry. All right, let's see what we can do here. We have motors, displays, four, I might be out of displays, uh, and computers. So we might have enough computers to see. Nope, it says we're gonna be all right. All right, so we have, hey, unknown signal four kilometers away uh, and that is again materials right it's components so uh, we are going to go out and get that I'm pretty good on gases and power uh, power is critical because you don't want to get out there and then suddenly discover you don't have enough power to run your tools so we have gone from not being survivable to being survivable so we have right now other than power uh, we definitely have some power issues, but uh, we can survive. All right, so having said that, 
let's go out and get some more resources because now it's all about resources. So we're going to sail out to this thing. Uh, we're going to see what it is if we happen to get something. So these unknown signals really are about finding suit parts, uh, which, is, which is a good thing, but uh, in the terms of this particular game, it's uh, these little satellite doohickey thingies are about resources because they're free components. Not only do they give you some free components, but if you deconstruct them, uh, you get even more components. So let's see what this thing is. Unknown signal. We have an antenna on this one even. Uh, so let's go ahead and press the button. See what happens. Hey, we got a wood rifle. Nice. Um, all right. So let's go ahead and we have... Uh, we'll start here. Uh, we have a grinder. We have interior plates and construction components. Awesome, awesome. Um, but my grinder. Um, so like I said, we are materials here. We have to be a little careful with stuff. That was the antenna. Um, they did not make this easy for this one. So the problem here is how do you get into the... Oh darn! That is not what I wanted to do. So, um, canvas is in here, which is uh, not what I wanted to get to, but uh, all right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do a little bit of cheating here. Oh, darn it. I totally screwed up there. All right. Uh, now, I know this is going to sound really silly. So. Uh, I just ground down that. Oh, darn. That is not what I wanted to do. Unfortunately, it's spinning. So... We'll turn off our initial inertial dampers here. And take the canvas and then whip our grinder back out and grind it down. So, um, this one was interesting enough because you ended up with uh, the two ports, the two access ports, because remember a small reactor only has one access port, and in this case it was a parachute container that only had one access point, and they're bolted together. So what I did there was uh, kind of accidental ground down the, uh, the parachute container enough that you can access the reactor's port through the container. Took the uranium out so I could use it, ground down the reactor, welded up the parachute container so I could get the canvas, uh, and then ground down the uh, parachute container. All right, so um, got to find that big ball in space again, which is right there. So that is my landmark the GPS marker so I'm cheating just a little bit uh, so I do highly encourage you to place uh, GPS markers so when you discover 
when you create a proverbial home base, uh, then oh darn, there's, uh, that's why it's lost in the corona there. All right, so uh, here's what we're going to do initially. Um, upside down versus this thing um, we have some priorities here uh, so power because I want to have enough power for these guys to really do something so uh, let me go ahead and pull out my welder here I do not know how much uh, so we have solar cells, construction component. Yeah, so we're pretty good to go as far as the ancillary uh, stuff here. So um, it doesn't really matter what side uh, we do, but I'm going to go ahead just because I'm OCD a little bit here. This, this guy is hanging off the side of that battery. So I'm going to go ahead and do these four. There we are. All right. So now these four are all interconnected and they are connected to the battery. All right. Um, let us, uh, we need a storage container uh, and uh, figure out how these are all. So I think uh, I'm going to build this one first. The reason why I'm going to build that one first is because I've just got those conveyors to get in there for this one. So uh, this may be a mistake, but uh, okay, so we don't have enough metal grids or anything to do that. But we can reach into these particular things and, uh, and do a few. So we are down to the point of needing resources. Uh, so let's see what we can do here. Nothing. So we are truly out of a lot of stuff. All right, let's uh, check one more thing here. Uh, let's see if we can get components. We're still out of steel plate. All right, so we are down to needing resources. So have I met my four basic criteria for survival. Do I have power? Yes. Check. Medical bay, which means I can heal myself if I get injured. So check on that one. Power. Life. Uh, do we have a, a, an ability to take gases, uh, take ice, and, and do something with it? Yes. Yes, we do. So let's go ahead uh, because we can. Let's go ahead and take the ice uh, that's, that's sitting here uh, and go ahead and put that into uh, the, the oxygen thing, the gas generator. And we should see this immediately start doing something. Well, maybe not because it's not connected to anything. The good news is, is I can take my bottles. So we have a 97% here, which isn't bad. Uh, we'll throw them in there, and that should go right to 100%. But you can see, just to fill up my bottle, it went from 1,000 down to 474. Now, uh, these are enhanced bottles, so they're not they're not your normal everyday bottle. All right, so gases, gases and resources. So the first thing we need to do. I'm going to go ahead and put everything I can spare uh, into this container, uh, which is all of, so more uh, two canvas, a, a grinder, I don't really need the enhanced grinder, and then communications equipment there. Okay, now here's the reality. 
this is a non-hostile universe, uh, which is to say there are no natural enemies here. So I don't have uh, droids turned on. Uh, uh, there's not going to be any, uh, you know, spawning uh, cargo ships or anything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and put my rifle away uh, and uh, my rounds of ammunition. So I'm just going to keep my grinder, my welder, uh, and my hand drill, and of course all my tanks. Uh, the tanks don't take up too much. All right. Uh, we talked about GPS earlier, so here's what I want to do. And I'm going to go ahead and do this on the other side. I'm going to go ahead and GPS the medical bay. Uh, and the reason I'm going to GPS the medical bay uh, is because um, ultimately uh, I'm kind of uh, so noob from position. So this is me. Uh, we're going to go ahead and change that to... Uh, Survival satellite. Okay. All right. So uh, we're pretty close to pretty close to zero there. So eventually, when this antenna is uh, is put up there, then uh, we may be able to. Let's see how many. Okay. There's, oh, because I, I emptied all of those out of my inventory. All right. So uh, we have this uh, this rather large uh, resource over here. This great big huge 250 uh, radius feet. So we're going to pull out our drill and I know this sounds really really wasteful but the first thing I'm going to do is drill into the center and the reason I want to do that is because if you're drilling and pulling all these resources out um, you're going to end up in a just a totally wonky tunnel. So what I want to do is create a tunnel Okay, sorry. Revert. Something I wanted to do before I left here, which was get energy, huh? That was, a, that was an oops. And and you'll do a lot of oopses in survival. It's just, you know, the nature of the game. Alright, power up. So I've got my tanks, so I'm all good with, uh, with gases. Uh, but energy, need that energy. Then back over here. Um, so drilling without collecting, uh, which is really just boring holes in things, is a right click, which does not collect any resources. And if you do it slowly, you'll create a fairly straight tunnel, which is exactly what I want to do. So we're getting into the iron and stuff. So all these are just visual. We have ice now. Uh -oh. So what I'm trying to do is keep fairly lined up on the marker, which should be about the center of this thing. So this should be my uranium. You can see uh, I, I get all the different markers here, or all the different uh, tags for the different resources that's around me. And again, the goal here is not to collect initially. I know that sounds totally counterproductive to the whole survival philosophy, but what I'm doing is creating... Uh, so this is nickel, I think. That's the new color for nickel. Uh, magnesium, I think. So the idea here was to create a very, uh, dare I say, neat organized tunnel. And uh, the reason I'm doing this and not collecting, if you were at any sort of uh, normal uh, satellite or uh, asteroid obviously you would not be doing this so blue I don't remember what the blue is now platinum platinum I think 
Maybe not. I don't I don't know all the colors. The colors changed. Silver? It should be silver. And the gold. Don't need a whole lot of gold for things, but Once my marker reaches zero, I know I'm in the center, so this should be platinum, I think. And again, I'm moving slowly here because I want to create a reasonably uh, straight tunnel. So, uh, if all goes, yeah, so not too bad. Um, so, the function here is I can now go straight in this tunnel and discover, and again, the, the method of demand is here, um, discover what I need and then gather those materials as I need them. So, I think this is uh, platinum here. see what it says. Yep, I need platinum. Um, uh, so we're going to get a spattering of, uh, of a couple things. So we should have enough uh, gold here to last for pretty much forever. And platinum. Platinum, do you don't need very much platinum at all. Um, what is this one? Cobalt. Okay. And uh, magnesium. And we are going to need a boatload of iron. So I'm actually going to spend some time. So this should be the nickel. Uh, if I am mistaken. Yeah, nickel. Working our way outwards here. Silicon, okay. And this should be my uranium here. Yes, indeed, uranium, which is a good thing. Right next to ice. The downside to ice is you fill up very quickly, so I'm not going to take a whole lot of ice, but I do want an abundance of iron. So we're going to fill up the rest of our inventory space here with iron. So uh, there's my tunnel out. It's nothing but stone out here. So we've created ourselves a pretty good path to go right to whatever materials we actually need. So we've just created a path so we know what we're looking for. We have easy access to everything now. All right, back over here. do here is dump this into uh, so the very first thing we need uh, is iron uh, ice I'm gonna go ahead and move that uh, uh, over to the uh, gas generator uh, obviously not working really fast but hey it's working right um, so uh, gold, 
and then platinum. Alright, the good news is I can put some of that, go ahead and turn my drill off, uh, into this container because this container is bolted up to the side of my refinery. So the refinery ultimately will be able to pull in uh, all those resources as it needs them. Uh, and I'm not going to put the ice in there because that would be really close to filling that. Uh, I'm going to put the ice into the, uh, the oxygen generator. there is a certain amount of storage space there. Alright, and all of it went in. Okay, so here's the good news. The good news is we have a few resources. Uh, the bad news is now I need to take those resources and actually do something with them. So assembling, uh, it says we do not have anything yet. So the goal at this point is to figure out what do I need? So, um, here's what I want to do. I want to get to the point where I have um, a working conveyor system. So, uh, how many resources do I need? Let me pull out my welder so I can see. Uh, I need small steel tubes construction components. So, small steel tubes this point. Uh, small steel tubes, large steel tubes. So I need 20 small steel tubes and 60. So quite a bit. Uh, so let's, uh, let's look and see what we have here. Uh, we have no steel tubes at all. Uh, and we need, yeah, so we could use pretty much everything. All right. So um, priorities, reactor. So let's go ahead and see what we need to get our reactor going. Let's focus there. So let's use our same priority list that we've already uh, talked about. Steel plate, we need 50 and 30, so I need 80 steel plate. We need uh, six motors, uh, metal grids. So what do we have? versus what we need. So we've got computers. Uh, we've got all these guys are already in their displays. So there's all the... Oh, did I do... Oh, okay. Sorry, that's pull, pulling it all in there. Um, yep, so those are all the components that we currently have. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and see what do I need. I need construction components, metal grids, motors, so I do not have any motors, and steel plate. So I need 80 steel plate uh, metal grid. Alright, so uh, having said that, uh, go back into either inventory or control panel, which is I or K respectively. We'll go into production. Um, we need steel tubes, but for now we need uh, Construction components. Uh, we need steel plate. Uh, ultimately, we need small steel tubes, large steel tubes, and interior plates. All of these are iron. Okay, so we are building up quite a bit of iron there, and we need metal grid. All right, so uh, it's going to go through, and as you can see, it's it's uh, working pretty quickly, even though. Uh, we do not have any of the uh, speed modules working, but it's it's going to cruise through pretty quickly and make all this stuff. I know this is like watching grass grow, but thankfully when it's just working with uh, the different objects, I think it's the steel grids that are... These are still just using iron. I think it's the metal grids that actually use, yes, nickel and cobalt, which which it may hang on those. Yes. 
So what we have to do, nickel, cobalt, um, we, we have to go back into the control panel here, inventory, uh, do everything. We're going to prioritize. So instead of doing gold, uh, we're going to shift the priority to cobalt. And you see it's stealing the cobalt now. Um, and then uh, we want to take some nickel and uh, put some nickel in here. So as soon as we get some cobalt, you notice it's not taking cobalt anymore. Uh, so let's go ahead and shift over to the nickel. It's taking it. Okay, it is taking cobalt too. But so basically, you're having to prioritize uh, everything it's doing here. Okay, so the good news is, uh, if we go into inventory and uh, go to our uh, refinery, we should see some stuff. In fact, let's hide empty, let's figure out, okay, these went here, so it's pushing it back to the container, which is good. Alright, let's see what all we need. Still need those metal grids, but we do have the steel plate. Um, so, oh, we're missing motors. So we got enough uh, steel grid. All right, uh, motors. Forgot motors. Uh, so uh, inventory, uh, production, and motors. So motors also need uh, iron, nickel, and cobalt. So, um, obviously, we need to um, go back into our inventory and uh, keep prioritizing uh, what's happening here. So, as long as we can keep this guy happy, eventually we'll get to our motors. So initially, when you're talking about resources, initially this is survival is about really building. So ultimately you want to build something that will get you from the situation that you're in to a more ideal situation. Now, how do you do that? Well, it depends on what the situation is, obviously. Uh, what's our first priority? Uh, in my view of the world, our first priority is ultimately gathering uh, those resources that we need. Uh, how do we do that? Can we do it by hand? Absolutely. Uh, is it fairly efficient? Well, not really. Uh, now, I'm using a script in the background um, that, that actually it, it runs, you don't even have to know how to script or how to put scripts in, uh, it just runs. And uh, uh, the script, in fact, uh, it's called automatic ore pickup. And what it does is instead of mining for half a second uh, and then spending the next two to collect what you just drilled, um, it automatically picks it up for you. So, uh, I, I like it because I get to spend time uh, actually building uh, rather than my refinery doing what my refinery is doing. And let's go ahead and take those two items in. Okay. Now, the good news is that should be our motors. Hey, look at that. Now, if all goes well, yes, it turned green. All right, uh, the next thing we want to do is, um, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and do this one. So uh, this junction ultimately connects this into here. The goal is to connect onto a, uh, a uh, cargo container. Uh, so we do need some, uh, and I do not have enough construction components. So let's go ahead and uh, 
log back in here, uh, go to our production, and we need construction components, which are right here. Never have uh, too many construction components. Uh, so we need to shift our priorities here again in our, uh, our refinery. And again, in these initial stages, uh, you're going to run into a lot of this. You've got a single refinery, so you really have to prioritize. Oh, and I'm low. Um, so it, it says energy low now at 25%, so I should be good for a few minutes. So, um, so the good news is that should have put uh, motors and construction components. All right. Um, so construction components, but thankfully the tank is functioning. Uh, it may not be functioning to where I want it to be, but it is functioning. All right. So we now have a connection to our cargo container, which is also connected onto our refinery. But we want a junction here. Thankfully, we have enough uh, parts and pieces for that. And uh, this is my favorite thing here, uh, this guy here, which uh, we need eight displays, and I do not think we have the materials to do displays. I don't think. Use this port here just because. Displays, what do we need for displays? Iron and silicon, so we do actually have all right, so um, if I click, it's a single one in the inventory. If I control click, it's a 10. If I shift click, it's a 100. So I'm going to put 100 displays, so it's a, a shift, left click. Okay. So now silicon here is my problem, Okay. but we can fix that by going into inventory. Going into my refinery, which is where I'm connected into, and we actually don't have any. Uh, so let's uh, let's haul the gold out, put that back into our box right here, and let's haul silicon in. All magnesium because we don't need magnesium for quite a while. Okay. Sorry, I'm confusing myself. Silicon. And let's put silicon up front. And then we should see displays. There we go. Okay, so this is going to keep marching along, but let's go ahead and queue up a bunch of stuff in production. Um, we need construction components. Again, I'm going to do the hundreds. Uh, we need grids, pipes. Uh, all right. Those uh, may or may not actually get to where we need to go because we may not have all of those resources readily available. All right, back up here to the cockpit, because I want to finish this. We have our displays now. We need 100 computers. Oh, my goodness. Computers very slowly. Looks like uh, looks like we're gonna do okay. All right, there's our hundred computers. Damn, that's a lot of computers. Proof glass. Should have known that, huh? 
glass in it. Why didn't I think of that? Production. Bulletproof glass, which is... Where is my glass? Where is my glass? Pretty quick. Uh -oh. Inventory. Energy low. Signal, we'll go and uh, go and grab that. Still not any way yet to uh, grab these resources, but all right, uh, where is that signal? So let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and get that. We're at a, a good energy. I've got gases. See if I can keep from bumping it this time. Which is fine. All right. Uh, so um, we have motors, steel plate. Always a good thing. Let's see if it will let us take that out of there. The answer is no. All right. So let us start taking this apart. So, uh, interestingly enough, we'll just kind of uh, break this in two. Uh, so we'll take that out. Uh, then we'll grind that down. Uh, then we go here, get the uranium, and take those. All right, and then we should have our GPS, which is there. Uh, my grinder. Back we go. So there's a few extra components that we can use for something else. All right, let's see where we're at on our various components. So let's go inventory. We're still uh, clearly doing some stuff. Silicon nickel. Uh, let us look and see what our production is. There's that. Small cargo container. We'll go ahead and put the uh, stuff there away. 
Got a lot of resources here. Obviously, when you're playing, you're not going to have a 60 uh, kiloliter uh, inventory, so uh, I'm, I'm using the Kenti mod, which adds a few things. All right, bulletproof glass. So we pull out our welder here and see what do we need. We just need those 60 bulletproof glass, and there it is. All right, then we want to go ahead and weld this thing up. And the reason I'm welding that up is that I want to ultimately get all of that connected in. All right, so the next thing we need to do is start connecting these other... Um, so the only way to get uh, oxygen into that particular thing is to weld this guy, which should be attached via this conveyor. Let's see if that's true or not. Nope, not. Which means I have to weld up this, which is good and bad. So I need interior plate. Lots and lots of interior plate. So interior plate. What do I need for interior plate? Here's my interior plate. It's just iron. need like 140. So that should be good. Maybe not, but should be. The thing about conveyors is I know they need lots and lots of motors. Alright, we still need 60 interior plate. But I know I have manufactured them. So this initial thing really becomes a function of, there's our 60, huh? Uh, so, let me see, what's my inventory? I know I need small steel tubes and large steel tubes, uh, more bulletproof glass, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and do production. Um, small steel tubes, uh, metal grid, large steel tube, steel plate, construction component, and motors. We know that we're going to need all of this. Power cell, silicon wafers. So um, this is going to be a little tasking, but let's go ahead and get uh, these guys going. Um, platinum. So I need just a tiny, tiny bit of platinum for solar cells, but we're going to need solar cells. All right. Um, so we got interior plate. Let's go ahead and finish this guy. So that's done. Um, did have enough. Out of motors. Oh, small steel tubes. So I did have enough motors. Production motors.
should have enough for the moment. So here's what uh, what we want to do is connect small steel tubes. Wow, did I? I just didn't do small steel tubes. I just wow. Small steel tubes. You never have too many of some of these. Uh, some of these, uh, s like steel plates. You need steel plates for like ninety percent of the of the blocks you can make. So, you know, having those. Uh, just queue them up, keep your assembler running, you know, constantly, you, you'll be all right. So those should be, I think, pushing out to the container. One of the reasons why I want that air to connector because then it can actually push into that big container. Uh, so once my small container fills up, then I could have a problem. All right, inventory. Let's see how we are in our small container assembler. Oh, we're about half there, so not bad at all. I guess we can take, take all that. Uh, all right. So junction, which will allow us to connect in. So now we are connected. So this uh, big cargo container is now connected into our uh, slowly uh, developing conveyor system. Okay. So now our medical bay, just to test, uh, should now be connected. So we should regenerate when we press T. There we go, 100%. So that's how you know. When your gases go instantly up to 100%, you know you are now connected into the gaseous systems and that they are functioning as they should, which is good. This is a good thing. All right, let's, uh, let's see what our battery situation is here. Can I make batteries? Yes, I can. Yeah, I, I didn't build enough power cells, but this is good. We, we have, so this one is now at 75% because it has been uh, taking power from these guys as well as the reactor. So we have now ample power as long as our uranium supply continues, then, uh, then that reactor is good. All right, and I don't think I have any reactor components. Nope, I have nine reactor components, so that's all good there. And then let's see where we are with the antenna. Okay, so I can get it all the way up except for radio components. I have four radio components. Uh, which I have used all of them, and I need 40. So I actually need to queue up. Like, let's go ahead and do that. So uh, I or K to get you into either inventory or uh, anything else. Uh, production, I want to do radio communication components. Um, I'm going to go ahead and queue 100 just because I want my assembler to be doing something. Um, oh, and all.
all it needs was all right uh, motors power cells computers don't need explosives displays of stuff in there so that initial challenge is really about being entirely focused on what you're doing what do I need and you put that into the refinery and as you saw we had to kind of shift things around a little bit um, but ultimately we were able to get uh, everything where we needed okay so that is our antenna now utility satellite is done. Now we can start focusing on things like we can either keep the priorities as they are or really focus on our containers uh, or perhaps the, uh, the better still focus is because we have met all the basics uh, we can now start branching out and doing some sideline stuff such as so we need construction components. Production. Oh, we're hung up on nickel. Inventory. Throw nickel in the front again. Production. Um, construction components. where we get to here. Well, let's take a little while. All right, let's cancel that one. Get right into here and have it do it. And let me see, those were power cells. So let's put those right there. Computers, displays, bulletproof glass. Nice thing is computers uh, build pretty quickly. Sometimes the challenges come in when you really queue up your uh, production to be in a specific way and then you realize, oh wow, I needed those first. So in this case, I kind of dumped the construction components on the back. Okay, the bad news is I'm uh, almost a half hour over my, uh, my normal allotted time. Not that that's a big surprise because I'm pretty, uh, pretty typical about that. So let's, uh, while we're watching the grass grow here, we'll, uh, we'll call it quits for this particular episode and then uh, join up again, uh, hopefully, on the next one. So we will see you next time.